So, I started playing EQ2 Live. Welcome to Bear Necessities, my name is Bear, and today I'm going to talk about my experience with Live so far. Give you some tidbits of information from my shallow knowledge pool about Live, and tell you what I think about it. Alright, so first off, live off of EQ2i, the wiki. This website hopefully never dies because I could do nothing without it. I will link to the timeline in the description below, but the wiki is very helpful in doing this expansion, or any expansion for that matter. Secondly, let's talk a little bit about fast travel. If you are a subscriber, just click this thing in the upper left corner. You can travel anywhere in the world. To start this expansion, we'll want to go to Svarni Expanse, which is the new area. Let's talk a little bit about gear. So apparently this is pretty common on live, but as a way to get people acclimated to the new expansion, you grab gear from this little chest. It's a merchant where everything is free. This should get you to the jumping off point for the expansion. Also, keep in mind that this gear is fully adorned. I actually missed this and I was missing tons of stats. So make sure whenever you get upgrades, you pull the adornments off and socket them into your upgrades. Oh, how do you do that? Well, you'll want to go back and buy this adornment reclamation thing from your class vendor in the starting city. All right, I'm going to stop right here and give you some potentially obvious advice. Make sure you join a guild. There are things that are just not explained very well, and having someone explain them to you is almost a must if you're going to be joining live. Here are some of the things that got explained to me, and uh, thanks to Seekers of Valor and Ashlyn on Halls of Fate for all your help. AA. There's a ton of different AA now, and getting a good AA spec that complements your class and the meta is daunting. I actually put one together from a really good fury on the server named Ashlyn. There's a website called EQ2Wire that actually keeps track of this data from Darkpaw's open API and pulls down character data like gear, adornments, and in this case, AA. After that, choose an Ascension class by buying this primer from the same box you got your gear in. I chose Elementalist because the experts essentially told me it was great for Fury. These spells are very, very powerful. After running some efficiency numbers, outside of my really good AA spells and a few others, at least for Fury, these were some of my most damaging and efficient spells, so make sure to snatch these up and incorporate them into your rotation. Speaking of spells, normal spells can be pretty easily experted. See if you can get your guildies and crafter friends to hook you up with some expert level spells. Spells go up to Celestial now, so that's Apprentice, Journeyman, Expert, Master, Grandmaster, Ancient, and Celestial. Experts on TLE are the de facto, but now you can get way, way up there. And the difference between like an Apprentice or an Adept and a Celestial or Ancient is like night and day. So at least try to get your experts with some help from your friends and this will help tremendously. Just like on TLE, signature quests are of the utmost importance. On TLE, they give you some cool items and you'll get some cool items from this as well. But in Visions of Vitrovia and as far as I know the expansions before it, as you do the signature timelines, you get to unlock flight in those zones as well as unlocking certain dungeons. So make sure you do your signature stuff. Generally, I love that the signature timeline guides you through every zone. Some of the quests have prerequisite other quests, so that causes you to do some of the side content as well. I really don't know how the people who write the wiki find all this stuff out, but I'm guessing it takes a lot of work, so props to these people. One thing that I'll mention that's kind of interesting is a lot of the zones in the game have multiple modes. In VOV at least, it's Solo, Heroic, and Heroic 2. And each of these have their own difficulty and essentially gear requirements. I'll come back to those gear requirements later. The great thing about these modes is each boss actually has very similar or identical mechanics in the solo version versus the heroic versions. This helps you learn mechanics before you do it in a group setting. One thing that will be tough is how long it takes you to kill stuff in here with the gear that you only get from the quests. It takes like 10 to 15 minutes to kill some of the names, and probably like 1 to 2 minutes to kill trash packs. This is intended as far as I can tell, but as you gear up, things will become quicker. 
After you finish the signature timeline, you'll head out to the Magnavi Waste to this girl in this area. You'll do her quest and she opens up these book and drop quests. Each one of these quests will give you a chest that has a random piece of gear. This will help you finish up replacing all of your gear that you got from that treasure box in the beginning. It will also give you some collection items and these collections give you larger collections that end up giving you extra pre prestige AA points. Also, it opens up purple shiny collections and point of interest achievements that will also give you extra prestige AA points. Once you've geared up to this point, there's tons of dailies, weeklies, and they all give random currencies that can be used to buy stuff. I don't even know where all the vendors are yet, but running some heroics with guildies will net you some upgrades. The quests are located up here in this Varney Expanse, but the zones for each quest and weeklies will auto get added to your quest journal when you enter the instance. This is honestly an amazing feature. Also, there are raid weeklies too, so stuff like Kern's X2s and some of the X4 raids will give you some weekly currency as well. Alright, so let's move on to some other things, starting with Panda Quest. So, in the summer of 2017, they started doing these Panda Quests in Sundered Frontier. This guy will make you run all over the world discovering things and collecting stuff for him. He has over 50 quests at this point, and unfortunately, you have to start at the 2017 quest and go from there to get to the current year. However, it does flag your entire account for completing these, so you only have to do them once, but they are going to take you a long time, like days, because of how much running around there is. The reason we unlock these is to get some really good adornments and other upgrades. I haven't finished them all yet, but I'm working on them. Get ready to explore the world, use fast travel till your fingers hurt, and talk to this panda a ton. Alright, the last thing I really want to talk about before we wrap this up is Mount, Mercenary, and Familiar. Getting a mount within the current tier gives you an extreme amount of potency. For example, my fabled one gives me 94,000 potency. My current familiar at level one gives me 28,000 potency. And mercenaries, once you level them up to five, 10, 15, 20, and 25, give you buffs that give you lots of stats as well. Mounts can also be trained and leveled up to give them essentially gear slots that increase your stats even further. These can be trained over time or leveled up more quickly by buying loot boxes off the Dark Paw Cash Shop. There are also barding slot unlocks that come in loot boxes off the Cash Shop as well that will enable you to add more bardings for extra stats. Familiars can level up with tonics purchased through loot boxes on the Cash Shop or by consuming other familiars. There is a daily quest called Familiars Wild that you can get in Kinos or Freeport that will give you a familiar from the current season that can either replace your current one or be consumed to level up your current one. Mercenaries also need to be leveled by training similar to mounts. You can also give them gear to make them better, but overall you'll be doing much, much, much more than your mercs, so they are primarily buff, cure, and res bots. As you train them and they get higher levels, the buffs they give you are really, really amazing as well. These can be trained over time or leveled more quickly by buying loot boxes and getting mercenary training reducers from the cash shop. Every season and expansion will bring new rounds of familiars, mounts, and mercenaries, so be certain you'll be swapping these in the future and have to level new ones. Alright, so we've gone over lots of things, but now I want to give my first impressions from my live experience. Okay, let's start with some of the things that I loved. I really enjoyed the design of the new zones. I think it's beautiful. The animations, bosses, creatures, and characters look great. There's some amazing lore that goes into the signature timeline, and I enjoyed seeing some old faces from the earlier days of EQ2, and also get engrossed in what is going on. The depths of the mechanics for solo, heroic, and raid zones have really fun and interesting things to do outside of just DPSing healing, and looting. There's so much content for new players, you can honestly spend weeks doing things and not even realize you just scratched the surface. And finally, the community is outstanding. Everyone I've encountered in the EQ2 community has been very, very helpful. 
Special thanks to Seekers of Valor and Ashlyn on Halls of Fate again for your help. Finally, let's talk about some improvements or suggestions for the EQ2 dev team. First, give all people essential spells like Adornment Reclamation, Singular Focus, etc. by default. Make tooltips, tutorials, or quests for adorning that are more visible to the user and help them learn how to do it. Second, point people towards the signature quest lines in game. New players honestly won't know how to do this, and without sources like EQ2i or the wiki, I wouldn't have known how to complete any of these quests. Third, explain pivotal systems in the game like familiars, mounts, and mercenaries. Honestly, I personally wish they were less pivotal and they only provided minor buffs, but if you're going to leave them in, we need to add some sort of tutorials or quests that will better explain these systems. And finally, reduce gatekeeping a little bit. I actually was genuinely frustrated for the first time at EQ2 in a long time when I got to 7150 resolve and was going to do Kerns 1, only to realize that my potency was about 150k too low, even though I had plenty of resolve. Having multiple hurdles to overcome is not only confusing to new players, but it can definitely deflate a player's experience. I hope you guys enjoyed my video and my experience with EQ2 Live. If you did, please leave a comment, like, and subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys later.